in the previous video we worked out the present value of a bond using uh, discounting cash flows individually uh, that was discounting the coupon payments individually and the face individually and also working out the present value of the bond we use the present value value of annuity factor um, and again we replicated the same results uh, in addition we probably ought to consider a more general situation where the coupon payment can be made at higher periodicities so instead of the coupon payment being made twice a year we ought to consi consider what happens when the <coughs> coupon is paid once and uh, and more times per year so for instance if we took the equivalent example but we said the bond uh, was paying a coupon at an interval of uh, twice a year then the $60 annual coupon would become $30 every six months and also we would have to adjust the interest rate to account for the discounting. Now in general that formula that we used previously could be amended so that the present value of the coupon would take this form. So let's write this in as a general formula into VBA and then see do our results tally, tally with what we had before. Okay so uh, in terms of VBA the function we've just looked at could be written in this format. In other words, the present value of a bond would be the coupon and the present value of the annuity factor would remain the same except we would be discount the interest rate would be divided by the number of coupon payments made per annum. And likewise the interest rate would be divided by the number of coupon payments we make per annum. In addition so we might say if we looked at this formula the coupon would be divided by 2 so we might say the coupon divided by 2 and what originally was the interest rate we could write here as R and um, I also becomes R. Okay, so let's just have a look at that. Okay, so let's copy and put into the spreadsheet. And we'll just paste here. And uh, what we would like to do is first of all, okay, let's implement the VBA uh, routine and let's take this function and see does it can we use it to estimate the value of the present value of a bond okay so we go back into excel we go to developer tab we go to insert and we include a module and then we can paste the algorithm in and we can remove the we can remove the comment okay so let's just remove that comment and we're left with the function and this function basically sets out if we copy again copy go back into our worksheet perhaps come uh, over here to see does the function actually work so we can paste this in just to compare like so for instance could we use this function the PVM present value of a bond copy and escape paste and so we would say equal to 
present value so the coupon rate the present value of the bond references the coupon rate the discount rate the time period the face value of the bond so the face value of the bond is 1000 and m we could just write as one and again we get the same result as before so we convert that to a dollar amount we get a thousand and thousand and uh, 1077 which is the same as we had before okay so let's save that result now when we're saving this we have to make clear that the workbook is excel macro enabled so we change the extension the file extension and we accept only excel macro enabled workbook and that's important otherwise if we leave that out uh, the code we've inputted in is gone okay so we can see the code works and let's just verify more generally that the code adheres to the results we just had so for instance let's take this code again and copy and paste and let's um, verify that the results we viewed here can be obtained again now in this instance nothing much has changed except the value of the bond so this would have been the annual coupon and it's all referenced so if I double click you can see it's the sum of these two values here and it's the present value so everything is all referenced this function is just a VBA function so we could write VBA uh, PV of bond so B O N D and uh, to verify the results we have here we can uh, change okay just in insert one more line here so insert shift cells down underneath the coupon will designate a cell called M which denotes the number of the number of uh, compa the, the frequency at which the coupon accrues so we'll say 2 okay and it's not a dollar it's just a number so general and we can change that maybe back to general and then accounting and this one to counting okay so uh, to rerun our results just change m to one or to two and the value here of the bond now corresponds to what we have here so the function that we inserted into the developer tab let's have a look developer copy back into the spreadsheet paste basically chimes with what we have here so the initial our data if you like is the face value of the bond the coupon rate the risk period rate the time period the this is um something that we work out so it's actually it's calculated we can remove it in a moment and then the bond price for a semi-annual or a biannual coupon paying bond the present value here is a thousand and ten now we can remove uh, these cells and we can remove these cells just to streamline our results delete and we've already verified that the function works and let's change this to currency for the moment okay so if we examine the code for a moment what 
we find here in VBA, right, the function that we've developed, if we input in the coupon rate, if we input in R, the maturity, the phase of 1000, and M, the periodicity of the coupon payment, then the present value of the bond would be equivalent to, first of all, we obtain the coupon as a cash amount, so the face multiplied by the coupon rate divided by 3, divided by 2, would be equal to 30. And then the present value of the bond would be that coupon payment, coupon payment by 1 minus 1 plus R divided by M, to the power of, we can say, um, M here, we could call this N, we could say T, and again the N we could denote as T just to be consistent with our notation, okay, and save, and then underneath we have R divided by M plus the face, 1 plus r divided by m to the power of negative t by m, so discounting the face. When we put it all together, the value of the bond is 1,010,091. OK, so once we have this function set up, we can do a little bit of sensitivity analysis. So we can paste the function again, and we can just make it a little bit bigger and of course this is our results now to look at some sensitivity analysis we could do the following we could consider different rates of interest and the bond price that's a normal thing to do so we could set this cell uh, equal to 1091 and then consider different rates of interest going up in units of one percent two percent three percent and we might pull that down, so let's make this just a little bit smaller. Pull this to one side, take the tree, continue down to 15%. And then we want to rerun this bond price, present value of bond estimation. And we want to change to observe the effect of it using different interest rates. Okay, so let's go to data, what if analysis data table it's a column we're using so we use the column and what in the original inputs do we use that do we want to change it's the cell reference to the discount rate we hit OK the bond price recalculates we could verify if we put in 0 0.056 here notice that the value of the bond corresponds to the value of the bond here so these two are the same. Let's change that back to 0, 05. Then take both of these and graph. And if we graph, go to insert, scatter. And we can, it's likely to be a convex function. And we get this value. Okay, so let's just change. So the value of the bond increases as the interest rate goes down. Reduce the interest rate, the bond price goes up. Increase the interest rate, the bond price comes down. Okay, if we change the periodicity to be 20 years, we can observe that in fact the relationship becomes much more convex. If we, if we um, change the, the periodicity, nothing much changes if we go back to two it just changes slightly the big impact of course here is when we consider different time periods and there we observe for very small changes in interest rates particularly when the interest rate is low the value of the bond can change very dramatically okay and we'll investigate that concept later on okay so let's leave that there and we'll refer to this as bond sensitivity.